Hey, what's up? It's Kathy, and I'm back with another process video. Uh, this one is for a paper issues challenge that was, um, it was a notable quotable, and it was always look on the bright side of life, which every time I read that quote, I cannot help but think of Monty Python's The Life of Brian. Um, so I hope there's at least someone out there that <laughs> agrees and knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, so what I decided to do was, it's a really long quote, but I didn't want to do a layout that was one of those ones with a whole bunch of, um, of title. So I decided to kind of shorten it and go with a different title, uh, that was Mr. Brightside and, um, which just then ends up being another song um, <laughs> uh, by The Killers. So anyway, I I just liked that title. I, it was a bit shorter. I could work with it easier, and it still kind of maintained the spirit of the original quote, um, which is something with the challenge. You don't have to do the exact quote. It's all about taking inspiration from it, however you do. Anyway, so that's what I took inspiration from. I have these pictures of my son, and uh, this was my oldest, so this was quite a few years ago. Never scrapped them, but I really liked them. I loved the colors in them. Um, he's just, he's up in a tree, because um, we put him in a tree. He was too young to climb the tree, but he wanted to be up in the tree. So um, it had this nice kind of crook that he could nestle in. So we put him up in there. And then of course I was snapping photos because I, this was about the time that I started getting obsessed with scrapbooking. So I was snapping photos of everything, especially in the daylight um, and outside because you're gonna get the, usually the best photos that way. Um, so they're really cute. I had a ton of, like I, I took quite a few but I didn't need all of them to tell the story. Um, but I actually chose three, which is still unusual because one for me could have done it, but I wanted to make a grid layout and I wanted to, like the, the, the bigger picture is in landscape. Um, so you're not really seeing much of the tree or anything like that. So I wanted to uh, do a portrait do some portrait pictures as well. And just to show like his laughing and everything like that. And it's kind of unfortunate because that tree ended up getting uh, a disease and uh, it was at my parents' home and they had to chop it down. So that really sucks <laughs> that that tree is gone. And there was another tree in the backyard that uh, was actually my sister and I planted it when we were like, like one or two and it got diseased as well. So it stopped um, producing leaves and it had to get chopped down. So it's really kind of disappointing. It's like one of those tr like things that people do and it's like, I planted this tree when I was a kid and look how big it grew and look how big I grew and oh, dang, it got diseased and I have to cut it down. And what does that say? <laughs> like, uh, does that mean I'm going to get... Anyway, uh, <laughs> very bad parallels, I guess. So I definitely wanted to do a grid layout. Uh, as I said, and I ended up that, that green, uh, sunburst paper is just an old paper I had in my stash. Um, I'm primarily going to focus on embellishments for this. And I, you had seen me kind of fiddle around with a, a gray paper because originally I was just like, I can't do it on black cardstock. It's just going to be too severe, I guess. And too boring for me because I like to use uh, patterns a lot and this wasn't going to have much in the way of patterns because I didn't need to back the photos with very much so I was a little worried about only having like one strip on the bottom and one strip on the top and I didn't cut the strips and then glue them onto the cardstock I actually glued them onto a separate piece and put the black on top and that's because I wanted them to show underneath it but I didn't want to waste the paper because it is kind of a cool paper um, and 
So I knew it would match with a whole bunch of stuff that um, I recently got from Paper Issues. So I pulled out, um, what is it? Um, Pink Fresh Studio, Case of the Blahs, um, do, 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 uh, Echo Park, Imagine That. And I was going through the My Mind's Eye um, new stuff too, but I think it's called Blast Off or something, but I didn't end up using it. I didn't need those colors. Uh, so I'm primarily going to work with some wood veneers and those kind of bell. And I mean, when you get those ephemera packs, oh my gosh, you get so freaking much in ephemera packs. And, you know, I don't know about anybody else, but because I like to use pattern paper, I would probably still have way more ephemera and I'm not, not always sure what to do with it. So this whole layering and and creating a grid really helps use up some of those because you're creating little clusters. So it's a great way to, to kind of use up scraps and stuff like that. I decided that black was just a little too harsh um, without something with it. So I had that hexagon uh, stencil from a long time ago. I don't know if I've ever actually used it. It came in like a pack with other ones. I didn't buy it for the hexagon and I think that may have been the first time I ever used it. And uh, I didn't tape it down or anything like that. I really wasn't worried. Um, I used my white dilutions uh, spritz, which I find works well for that type and it stands out really well on something like a like a, a cardstock especially the the black cardstock and um i really liked that fade out effect that it had where it was a little bit more intense in the middle and then it faded out i didn't want the whole thing to be covered with the stencil and the spray and uh oftentimes i do like a mist or something and then i'm like all right well that's about as good as it's gonna get and i don't like it um I really like the way that this one turned out, the background of it. I'm really happy with it. I just think it turned out gorgeous, actually. Like, I am really, really, I want to say ecstatic, but I was scared I would accidentally pronounce it with an X because I don't know why. I don't know why I would do that. I know that's not the word. Um, anyway, I backed the main photo with some Pink for Studio um paper and it was from nope nope don't remember <laughs> it's from um it's from stuff from last year so I don't always remember all the all the um products and I don't I'm not smart like some other scrapbookers I don't write them down when I'm using them um for what uh what products and what companies and stuff like that but I backed it and then I used a cut apart to back it a little further with some gray. But I, besides possibly using ephemera, I'm not going to back the other photos with uh, pattern paper. And kind of the reason I backed that photo with that paper was it was like an, it had an orange, li orange lines in it, which was great because I wanted to bring in uh, orange into the layout. I didn't want it to just be greens and grays and blues and teals. Um, I wanted that pop of orange because on his little um, uh, overalls, it's Tigger. So there's orange and it's just, it's, it's just there. Like it's, like it's hidden, but, uh, but it really kind of helps give that accent color. Cause I'm pretty certain orange and like teal are complementary colors. So they really play off well together. Um, as you can see, because they use them in that, imagine that line, because that's where that chipboard frame came from. And it's got teal and it's got the, the green that I love and navy blue and orange. And I just love that combination. Like I know it's really common and a lot of companies use it for their product lines. Uh, so I don't always buy it, but I'm like always drawn to it as a masculine color scheme. Um, it would look good with red as well, but anyway, so I'm trying to bring in lots of pops of orange. Um, some of the different products have different um, embossing, not embossing, but some of them might have like foiling uh, and some of them might be gold or silver. And I'm not going to worry about it being perfect like that. 
I don't want to cover up too much of the paper. I do still need to have a title somewhere that I'm at this point not even thinking about. Like I knew I wanted to use the title I said, but I wasn't sure what uh, letters I was going to use or anything like that. So I'm not thinking that far ahead. Um, I don't think that far ahead. That's, that's, uh, that's a tip from me. It's not a tip. It's a, it's a fact. <laughs> I don't think these layouts ahead very much. Um, I just go in with a general concept and the general concept was, hmm, let's make a grid with these photos. I didn't even know where I was going to lay out the photos. As you can see, I'm just debating what is going to be cool and what's going to go in that. And I have that wild child uh, pink paisley stuff. And I love that little awesome. Hello, my name is awesome. So I'm going to frame it. And it's not perfectly in the frame, but I love the off kilter kind of effect because everything else is very, you know, up and down grid. It needed a little something that wasn't perfect um, there. And that cat is adorable. And why not? Uh, he's cute and he has the colors I need. So, you know, it's a picture of my son in a tree. So I don't really have a theme going on. Um, I'm just trying to, to kind of do like really cutesy inspirational kind of stuff because he's always, um, he, he always likes to cheer people up and, and stuff like that. And I just really love that about him. I realized that I had um, two wood veneer spots, but not a third. So I found this old superstar one and I'm going to glue that one down. So I really like the little pops of wood because I mean, he's in a tree, so why not add in some wood veneer? Um, and I made sure to add in that boy because uh, it's, it's a circular item on, um, on a grid with a lot of squares. So I wanted to add in some enamel dots and the enamel dots are from Case of the Blahs. I No, I don't know. I'm looking now. I've run off. I don't know what I did with them. <laughs> I can't remember if um, Pinkfresh Studio even does enamel dots, but they look like they're from that line because they match quite quite a bit. So I feel like it is from that. Um, and I just kind of put them in places where they were still on the embellishment clusters. I apologize for like running off to go check that out. I, I feel bad. I should edit that out. I'm not going to <laughs> because it's been a long time since I made a video. I've been really uh, struggling with some uh, stuff in my life. So I'm really happy to even just be getting to do this. I kind of, in hindsight, wish that I hadn't chosen that T and that D because they are navy blue and they do kind of blend in. But when you see it, um, like the layout in person, they don't blend in as much, but in photos and whatnot, they do. Um, I realize I'm just gonna put it right across. And I think that was kind of, I had to move it down because the mister wouldn't fit up at the top. And yeah, it, it leaves some room for um, journaling. And I did some stamping on that little arrow. And that's it. More dilutions and pictures are coming up. Mm -hmm.